Hello, and welcome to Section 3. In this section, we'll cover everything you need to know about lists and forms in ServiceNow. Before we get into lists and forms, I'd like to discuss records. So, what exactly is a record? You can think of a record as a row in a spreadsheet. For example, I have a table below. The first row, the header, has a first name column, a last name column, a favorite fruit column, and a pet column. In the database world, these would be called fields. The following fields correlate to records. Each row represents a person with their names, favorite fruits, and pets. A record is a collection of fields that make up a single entity. If we wanted to find John Doe's favorite fruit, we would say something like, find the record where the first name is equal to John and the last name is equal to Doe and return the favorite fruit field. These records are stored in a database table. A database can have many tables, such as an incident table, a problem table, a change table, and so on. We'll discuss more about tables in Section 5. Each record has a unique key called a SysID. The SysID is a 32-character alphanumeric string, which is used to identify an exact record. So if we had two Mark Millers in our table, we could use the SysID rather than the first and last name to identify a specific Mark Miller. Luckily, ServiceNow automatically generates the SysID for us and provides tools to retrieve the SysID for specific records, so we'll never have to memorize these IDs. You can think of a SysID as a home address. Each house has one and only one address. If you give your home address to a friend, they can locate your exact house. Records are everywhere in ServiceNow. They represent specific users, groups, roles, settings, incidents, problems, and so on. Now that we have an understanding of records, Let's take a look at lists and forms. Whether you are administering an instance or developing within an instance, you'll be spending the majority of your time in a list view or a form view. On the left, we have a screenshot of a list view in ServiceNow. Each row is a problem record along with its short description. Lists and forms are two different ways to view one or more records. Lists are often used for many records, while forms are used strictly for viewing one record at a time. Lists allow users to filter and sort records easily. You can see checkboxes on the far left side of the list screenshot. We can use these checkboxes to select specific records and do mass updates. Oftentimes, you can double-click a cell to edit a field value without going into the record's form view. On the right, we have a screenshot of a problem record in ServiceNow. Forms are often used when creating or editing records. They provide a better overall user experience and tend to be more powerful. We'll now take a look at list views within the system. Here in the Application Navigator, we can see that in the Incident Application, there are a number of modules. We'll go ahead and click on the Open module, which takes us to a list view of all open incidents. From this view, the List view, we can see that there are a number of columns or fields, such as Number, Caller, Short Description, etc. We can also edit record fields right in the List view. Here, let's set the system administrator as the caller for this specific incident. 
Let's also change the state of this incident from new to awaiting problem. And we can also update multiple records by clicking on a field, holding down the shift key, and then clicking and dragging your mouse down the column. The fields are highlighted in a light blue. Here you can see we'll be editing eight rows. We'll double click to bring up the selection and we'll change the state to awaiting problem. Now let's take a look at forms. On the incident list, we'll click the new button, which will take us to a new record form view. Here within the main content frame, we can see a gray banner bar, also called the title bar. This bar has the table name, a menu icon, and a back button. On the right hand side, there's a paperclip icon where we can add attachments to this record, a question mark icon that can toggle annotations on the form, a gear icon which can add or remove different fields on this form, and then finally we have a submit and resolve incident button. Here you can see there are a number of fields on the incident form. There is a number field, a caller and location field, a category field, and so on. There are freeform text fields, choice fields, and these search fields called reference fields. We'll talk more about these fields in a later video. We'll go ahead and fill out this incident form. We'll type in system administrator for the caller, and we can see that the location field automatically populates. We'll talk about how this works exactly later on in the course, but for now, the location field was populated since it's a part of the caller record. We'll go ahead and select software as the category and email as the subcategory. We'll also provide the exchange server as the configuration item. We'll put an impact of high and an urgency of medium, which will automatically calculate a priority. We'll put in a short description and we notice something interesting here. Whatever we put in the short description will be used to query the knowledge base for knowledge articles that match the short description. This is a powerful feature called contextual search, and we'll cover this later on in the course. We'll leave the contact type as phone, and keep the state as new. We'll click the magnifying glass next to assignment group, and we can see a pop-up box brings up a list of all assignment groups within the system. We'll select network and now submit the incident. As you can see, we're redirected to the list view. If I go to the number column and click the column title, it will toggle the field in descending or ascending order. Now we see our incident at the top. We'll go back into the incident, and here we can see all of the fields that we filled out just a minute ago. If we scroll to the bottom of the form, we can see additional fields and what is called form sections. These help to organize the form and provide a better user experience. There are also related lists down at the bottom. Each tab here correlates to another table, and each row correlates to a record in that table. If a record in another table is somehow related to this incident, it would be shown here in one of the related lists. We'll also discuss these more in depth in a later video.